Hello again. Tonight we're going out, a group of friend and, uh, friends, and as you may have heard me say before, one of us really likes Burgundy, so we try to always have a bottle of Burgundy on hand. And so I picked this Volnay for tonight. It's a nice, you know, winter evening, pre-holidays, we're gonna have a good time. Nothing really too complicated. It's something that's supposed to be enjoyable by everybody uh, uh, without too much drama. And so I hope this is gonna accomplish that. This is a 2012 Volnay. Uh, Vieille Vigne uh, by uh, De La Grange et Fils. It's a family property. It's they are like this is the fifth or sixth generation. They're based in Volnay, which is the the area between uh, Pomar to the north before you get to Bonn, and uh, Meursault and Chambol Musigny to the to the south of them. So it is in the Côte de Bonn. It is uh, unlike you know it's contrasted with its neighbor Pomar. Uh, especially for American tastes, by you know, Pomar is known to be more, a little bit more powerful, makes more of a statement. Volnay is all in subtlety and finesse, and I like both quite a bit. And Volnay has become a little bit of that typical uh, image of the iron fist in a velvet glove kind of thing, silky tannins, but very strong and straight structure. It's kind of a, a very interesting, supposed to be like this interesting combination. And I've liked the Volnay I've had in the past. I've had some Premier Cru. This is not a Premier Cru. The Premier Cru in Volnay is a band, like a band up the hill, just going up the hill that goes the whole length of the, of the commune. And the village wines, and this is one of them, are further down the slope, like is always the case, as is always the case in, uh, in, uh, in uh, Burgundy. There's no Grand Cru in Volnay, so you have the, the Premier Cru and you have some of these. There's a lot of Vieille Vigne, actually, uh, quite a few uh, makers who make old vine Volnay. Uh, this is, on average, about 50-year-old vine, so you're going to get that that sort of uh, a little bit, uh, hopefully, bigger concentration. 2012 was not necessarily a great year, but this is why we're having it now, and we're not waiting too long. I hope I have not waited too long uh, already. But I'm, I'm hoping it's going to be okay. This is a good property. They make a few uh, Premier Cru. They make Pomar as well. So, so they, know, they know what they're doing. Uh, this is uh, hand-picked and uh, de-stand. And sort of, uh, they make about, I think, 12,000 bottles of this every year. Aged for, for about a year in wood. On the color, on, you see that it's already, it's, it's very, it's pretty clear, but it's got a little bit of that brown tint that you get in wines that are starting to age. Not necessarily a problem in by itself, but it tells you how the evolution of the wine is going along. On the nose, I'm really, it was a little bit close, but it's opening up a little bit of that dusty, not necessarily musty, but really sort of dusty, you know, closed in smell, nose. But the, the fruit started to come in, um, a little bit of acidity, a little bit of volatile alcohol. This is not a very alcoholic wine, but you can get that on the nose. But it's sort of uh, really opening. It's still very subtle. You really have to work at it. But I think within an hour or so, it's going to, and I'm, it's in a decanter, it's going to really uh, open up uh, more. Hmm. On the palate, you do get the acidity, and that's good because we're going to be having it with bistro food, and so that's going to be very helpful. The the sort of tart cherry is also there, so this is really more. It's subtle, but it's a little bit more on the tart side, not on the sweet side, which is fine because this is a wine that's supposed to have quite evol evolved quite a bit. The finish is nice. It's very, it's very, uh, it's very light. It's more of that sort of uh, really fine tannin that you feel on your tongue, not necessarily in the back of your throat. Uh, it doesn't sort of, it's not mouth puckering or whatever. But again, that's not something you're gonna get with Burgundy in general. It's really what you expect of a well-made sort of nice little Burgundy, let's say, if there is such a thing, which is good acidity, good fruit subtle, not a not a kind of a hit over the head. And uh, I think it's just right to be having this uh, today. I'm glad I'm not waiting, you know, much longer. Hopefully we'll all have a good time. Cheers. See you soon.